Hi, I'm Rick Blunt, pastor at Okemos Community Church here with the midweek devotional. I'm glad that you have tuned in. I'm standing here on the, uh, the deck of our uh, condo uh, looking at the cul-de-sac. We're at the end of Emerald Lake Drive. Uh, it's a nice, almost garden-like uh, setting uh, in the island of the cul-de-sac. But what you don't see is what's missing. There used to be, until a windstorm a few years ago, a very huge, magnificent uh, blue spruce pine uh, where you see the grass. Now, when I look at the island, I, I see what was there before, and I miss it. But if you never saw it, it looks beautiful as it is right now. Sometimes letting go of a memory uh, is difficult. In my first church, I was on the old Mission Peninsula just north of Traverse City. It's a, a three miles wide at its widest and 18 miles long hilly. It's where there are cherry orchards and uh, now vineyards. It's very uh, picturesque. And I remember uh, when we were early there and someone was giving directions, they said, well, you just take the hogs back until you get to the place where the Holman house used to be. Well, first of all, I, I didn't know that part of Center Road was called the hog's back, where the road went down on uh, both sides. And second, I had no idea where the Holman house was before uh, it was taken down. We sometimes forget that other people don't share the same history, and therefore they don't have the same perspective. What we see or don't see is influenced by where we've been and what we've experienced. What we know or don't know is likewise influenced by where we've been and what we've experienced. We need to remember, friends, that other people have walked different paths than we have walked. And therefore, they have different interpretations and understandings of things in life. And we have two choices. We can be enriched by their different perspectives, or we can feel compelled to correct their perspective, to align with ours. And we assume that ours is the correct one. Learning to let go is often difficult. It's hard to do because we tend to hold on to what we know and what is familiar. There's a line from a, a newer hymn entitled, A Mother Lined a Basket, that says, the hardest part of loving is learning to let go. We know that, don't we? We know it instinctively, uh, uh, how it happens in our lives. When our children are old enough to start making decisions, we, we often give them an either-or choice where both of the um, options are acceptable to us. And then we might ex expand it to three or four options. And then we start letting them make their own choices and set their own options. And then we learn to let go knowing that they will sometimes make poor choices. Learning to let go is hard as a principle. I, I remember those uh, 
first years of kindergarten where you almost had to uh, pry the mother and child apart. Or the first week someone sends a child away to uh, an overnight camp, maybe even a week long, uh, or packing up your child and leaving them at college or uh, when we're taking our children to get married, the walk down the aisle, the, the letting go, or the passing of a loved one, letting go. The hardest part of loving is learning to let go. Each of us walks a different and unique path through this journey of life. And therefore, we see, experience, understand, and interpret this world differently. It leads to different understandings and various choices. In Romans, in chapter 12 and 13, we've, we've looked at that over these past few weeks. Paul is focusing on love and what genuine love really is. And then in this 14th chapter, he begins to address some particular situations in which it's hard to put love into practice. What do you do when someone you know and love understands the faith and its implications for how to live their life in a different way? What do you do then? How do you go on? Learning to love is hard. The hardest part of loving is learning to let go. So I want to ask today, what do you need to let go of? What wound have you been nurturing so that it's not allowed to heal? Who has said or done something that you thought was wrong? or that injured or hurt you? Who have you judged when it wasn't your responsibility or role to judge them? Can you love enough to let go of the past? Do you love enough to forgive even when the person doesn't ask for forgiveness? Will you love that family member or that neighbor or co-worker whose beliefs you are sure are wrong? That new hymn concludes with these lines. Grant us hope and faith, God, and love enough to give. The cul-de-sac, it is beautiful without the pine tree, the missing tree. And roads, they, they have names, and landmarks change. And we do indeed have enough love to forgive, to trust others to make their own decisions. We love enough to be blessed by diversity. We have love enough to live without judging. Hear how it is in the opening verses of chapter 14 from the book of Romans. 
Welcome those who are weak in the faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe that eating everything while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on those who eat? For God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. And those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves. And we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, quote, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God, end quote. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. Let us therefore no longer pass judgment on one another, but resolve instead never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of another. Will you pray with me? Oh God, give us love enough that we might live without judging, that we might not feel that when someone else believes differently, that it is somehow an offense to how we believe. Give us grace. Give us grace to see the richness of diversity in this world of brokenness. Help us to be about healing and helping. We pray for those suffering from fires ravaging the West, for those recovering from hurricanes in the South, for those living with the devastation of the windstorm in Iowa and the Midwest, for those in Midland still recovering from the dam bursts. We pray for those who are hungry and jobless for those who are dealing with COVID-19, for families that are grieving, in all those places, God, give us love enough to let go. Give us love enough to move forward into the future, trusting in your goodness and grace to be with us always. And as this pandemic wears on and we are tired of it, give us strength, O oh God, to continue to make wise choices so that we protect our health and the health of those around us. Unite us by your Holy Spirit. We ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful to you. 
if it has, it's uh, helpful to our uh, visibility online if you uh, hit the like button. Great if you make a comment, and even better if you share it on your Facebook feed or um, send it in an email uh, to a friend. Um, I'd be interested to know what are the kinds of things that have been difficult for you to let go of in your journey through life. Why don't you risk putting that in the comment uh, section below? What are some of the hard let goes of? Invite you to join us Sunday. We'll have a message available online at 9 a.m. And then we gather for uh, just a, a casual time of interaction with other uh, people at uh, 11.30 via Zoom. We'd love to have you uh, join that gathering. You'll find the link uh, in the Friday newsletter. Uh, and uh, you can call the office if you uh, need more. On Tuesday, I'll be in the parking lot at 3 p.m. On Wednesday, we're continuing our racial justice conversations. Last week, we heard a presentation by the Reverend Brittany Steffen, who is the uh, assistant director for multicultural vibrancy in the United Methodist Church for the state of Michigan. Uh, that uh, presentation is available online, and we'd invite you to watch it if you weren't able to. And this Wednesday, we're going to have a conversation of uh, what did we learn and um, what are the implications for us as individuals and as church, uh, and what might be the next step. So we invite you to tune into that Wednesday at 7 p.m., on Thursday, uh, I will be uh, having a Zoom coffee at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, again, informal and just a time for us to chat and catch up with one another. Thanks for tuning in. May you be blessed this week.